Okay, let's try and fit all of mechanics onto one piece of A4 paper. Tall order, but let's see if we can do it. Don't forget that you can download the full and GCSE version of this in PDF form, links in description. So we're gonna be talking about motion, forces, energy, moments, momentum, and materials. First thing we need to talk about is average speed. It's distance over time. I'm gonna put a box around all the equations that you need to remember, for GCSE at least. We say average speed because we don't know what's happening to the speed over the course of that distance. Here are our graphs, we have a distance time graph, we could say displacement time graph, gradient is equal to speed or velocity if it's displacement time. Velocity time graph, the gradient gives you acceleration, the area under the graph gives you distance traveled or displacement. But what about SUVAT? We use the SUVAT equations or Newton's equations of motion if the object is accelerating. If we're chucking something up or dropping something, it doesn't matter, acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second squared towards the ground, so it might be minus if something's moving upwards. Don't forget that for projectile motion, if something's chucked horizontally, then we use SUVAT vertically, but then we just use speed equals distance over time horizontally because we assume there's no frictional forces. The path that an object takes, in this case, is a parabola, or it's parabolic. Let's have a look at forces. Newton's first law is that an object's motion is constant if there's no external force acting on it. In other words, velocity is constant. Don't forget that that could mean that the direction is changing while speed is staying the same. Circular motion. We're not going into that here though. Second law is F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. Don't forget that F is the resultant force doing the accelerating and mass is the total mass being accelerated. Third law, to each action or force, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Weight is equal to MG, that's mass times gravitational field strength, 9.8 or 9.81. For an object to be in equilibrium, that means constant motion. We're talking about Newton's first law there. We need no resultant force. That means that forces are balanced. And also we have to have no resultant moment or torque. We'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. Air resistance and friction, this frictional forces increase with speed. If you've got a mass on a slope, then the force pulling parallel to the slope down the slope is equal to mg sine theta. That's the component of the weight. All right, energy, here we go. Kinetic energy is half mv squared, GPE is mgh. If we're given h, we pretty much know that we're gonna use GPE. If there's no energy lost when something falls, then we know mgh equals half mv squared and the m's cancel. But if the GPE at the top does not equal the kinetic energy at the bottom, then energy is lost in the form of thermal energy or heat. And we can say that that's actually work done against frictional forces. That leads us nicely on to work done. Work done is equal to force times distance. E equals FD. I prefer E, some people use W, but it is energy is measured in joules. Remember that the force and distance need to be parallel. So if they're not, then you need to times by cos theta, theta being the angle between them. The power version of this, power developed, is P equals FV. We just divided the whole equation by time. Okay, materials, let's look at Hooke's law. Force is equal to spring constant times extension, F equals KE, or F equals KX, or F equals K delta L. Doesn't matter which one you use. Here's the graph of force against extension. The gradient gives you the spring constant, and that's measured in newtons per meter. The area under the graph is equal to the energy stored it's a triangle so therefore it's going to be half times force times extension if we substitute in ke instead of f then we get half ke squared stress or tensile stress measured in pascals is equal to force divided by area strain is the ratio of extension to original length the young modulus is equal to stress over strain so therefore the whole version is fl over ae and if we draw a graph of stress against strain, then obviously our gradient is going to be equal to the Young modulus. Let's look at that graph again. We've got three main points that we look at. We have the limit of proportionality. That's when it starts to curve downwards. We have the elastic limit. Beyond that, it's not going to return to its original length. It deforms plastically. And then the top of the curve is the ultimate tensile stress. Don't forget that things can take a different route when they unload compared to loading and the area of the graph in between is equal to the energy lost between loading and unloading. Don't forget that if forces are balanced, then no matter how many forces there are, they will always make a closed loop if you add them up, that is top and tail them. If something's being accelerated upwards, then the force needed is not only MA, but it's MG plus MA because you need the force of MG just to keep it there floating as it were. And then we need the extra force MA to make it accelerate upwards. Okay, moments. We know that moment is equal to force times distance. Don't forget that our definition is force times distance perpendicular from pivot to force's line of action. So we might have to times by cos theta. If there are two unknown forces in a diagram, then you take moments about one, or in other words, make it a pivot to remove it from the equation as it were, 
and then you can find out the other. The principle of moments is that for a system to be in equilibrium, the sum of the clockwise moments must equal the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. And we know there has to be no resultant force for complete equilibrium. For an object to topple, the center of mass must be past the pivot so that the moment of the weight does pull it the wrong way, as it were. Scalars and vectors. Scalars just have magnitude, like area, distance, energy, and power whereas vectors have magnitude and direction, like force, acceleration, velocity, and displacement. Momentum is equal to mv, so that means the unit is kilogram meters per second, or newton seconds. How does it link to force? Well, force is equal to delta mv, that's change in momentum divided by time. In word form, force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. This is the equation that shows that the longer a collision takes, the less the force felt. And that's how crumple zones and airbags work. They increase the collision time. In other words, increase the time that it takes for you to lose your momentum so you feel less force. If you have a force time graph, there's really only one thing you can do with it, and that is find the area under the graph that gives you the impulse. That's the change in momentum. Principle of conservation of momentum is total momentum is conserved. Absent, that means so long as there are no external forces. A couple of examples, if we have two objects colliding, then we know that the momentum of A plus the momentum of B must equal the momentum of both of them if they couple together. Then if we have a recoil situation, like a bullet being fired from a gun, then we know that there's no momentum before and no momentum afterwards, so that must mean that the momentum of the gun going backwards must be equal to the momentum of the bullet going forwards. Okay, technically we should stick a minus in front of one of them because one of them is gonna have a negative velocity. But when it comes to recoil, we don't care about that too much. Let's think about braking distance. Braking distance, quadruples if you double your speed because kinetic energy is half mv squared. So if you double your v, then you have four times the kinetic energy. Other things that can affect braking distance are the road condition, weather, and tire condition. What about thinking distance? Speed, again, drugs, distractions, and tiredness. And we have a couple, there's two equal forces. That means that there's no acceleration, but it does turn or start to turn. If you have something that's traveling at a constant velocity, but mass is being churned out as it were, like a fluid, like water in a hose, then we rejig the rate of change of momentum equation so that we have F equals delta M over T times V. And so that's kilograms per second times meters per second. Units are really helpful for these kind of questions. But if you have density, area, and speed, then the force is going to be equal to rho a v squared. Note that you might see that called momentum carried per second, but that's effectively force. And if we have a force or any vector, then we can find the components of the resultant vector by times in by cos theta or sine theta. Turn through the angle times by cos, turn away from the angle, times by sine. And we have two types of collision. We have elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. For elastic collisions, total kinetic energy is conserved, and it's not in inelastic collisions. But don't forget that total energy is conserved in both. Total energy is always conserved. So if that helped you, please leave a like. If you think I missed anything that should be added to the sheet, then put it in a comment down below, and I'll try and add it for you. If you want to test yourself on this stuff, then have a look at my flashcard question videos on these topics. See you there.